Praise God, praise God. I want to share with you the word of God today. The Lord has laid it upon my heart to do a series of messages and a series of teachings. And I want to share with you about the word of God. How was the word of God written? Who wrote the word of God? And I want to talk to you about how powerful the word of God is. And I want to talk to you why it's important to read the King James Version. The NIV version leaves out about the blood. And that is the most important part in the Bible is the blood. Because without the shedding of the blood, there's no remissions of sins. And that was the mandate on Christ's life was go to Calvary and shed his blood to buy us back up off the option block of sin. And if you do the history of the NIV Bible, it was written by a woman homosexual. And it left out the blood. And it says in Revelations not to add or take away from the word of God. The King James Version Bible 1611 edition was written during the church of Philadelphia. And it was during the time that the church had not fell into uh, apostasy. That is why the King James Version 1611 edition and Bible is the most accurate. Praise God. So if you um, read in the church of Philadelphia, they were the only church that was not rebuked. Praise God. And I just want to share with you about the Word of God. 2 Peter 3 and 2 teaches us that the Word was written by the Holy Prophets and given to the the word of God was written by the Holy Spirit, excuse me, the the word of God was written by the Holy Spirit given unto the holy prophets and apostles. The word of God was written by the Holy Spirit for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness, according to 2 Timothy 3.16. Three, I began to look up doctrine. What, what does this mean? This is the Holy Spirit written the Word of God for doctrine. You know, you got to know what you believe in and have a firm foundation and know the gospel of Jesus Christ. I begin to look in doctrine and its principles of salvation. It means to teach. The definition of reproof is like rebuke. John 16 and 8, it says, And when he comes, he will reprove the world of sin and righteousness. Judgment. Hebrews 12 and 6, For whom the Lord loves, the Lord corrects. He chastens and scourges every one whom he receives. Whom the Lord loves, the Lord corrects. The definition of correction is to make right, to bring forth truth. The Holy Spirit, according to John, guides us into all truth, and he will show us the things to come, and even remind us of the things that we have forgotten in John 14 and 26. The Word says the truth will set you free. Praise God. The Word is pure truth because Jesus is the Word. And when you this Word uh, gets into your heart and your spirit, praise God, and you're rich in the Word, uh, you will be strong. It says in First John, young men, you have overcome the wicked one because you've been strong in the Word. Praise God. And the Word of God is a firm foundation in pure truth. Let the Holy Spirit have free course in your life that you can worship in spirit and in truth. Um, the Word of God was written by the Holy Spirit for instruction in righteousness. We must, as ministers of God, give instruction in righteousness and love because we are held accountable for the words we say and uh, how we say them and how we minister. Instruction is uh, the law of God, the word of God, to give instruction in order to follow. Mark 12 and 30 through 31, he said, I give you a old commandment, but yet a new commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus said, love is fulfilling the law, and if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. In the Old Testament, they had 613 laws. Jesus gave two in the, two in the New Testament, but he came to fulfill the law. Proverbs 4 and 13. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her. She is thy life. Proverbs 12 and 1. Whosoever loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. 
I looked in the brutish and it means carnal. It means untaught, insensible. Um, praise God. And the Bible says to be we cannot serve God carnally minded. We cannot please God. And they, those that walk in the spirit will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. But it says he that re hateth reproof is brutish. And that's sometimes that's just how the Lord he has to reprove us. He has to instruct us. The the Proverbs ten and eight. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a printing fool shall fall. Printing fool means to speak idle, and to be uh, without understanding, a brute. Uh, praise God. And the word teaches us that we will be judged according to every idle word. Paul said to put away foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law. They are unprofitable and vain. But when I notice that word brute, um, Peter teaches uh, about ungodly, uh, ungodly, um, the, the false. He treat, uh, is ministering about the false. And it says that they are natural brutes, beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things they no, have no understanding, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption in Second Peter 2 and 12. And it's talking about brute beast. Um, and then it says, the word of God, praise God, um, it shows us the ways of God, and um, we need to be rooted and grounded in the Word and teaching and preaching. We need to preach the Word and instruction in righteousness and not our personal convictions. We see a lot of people preaching convictions, but not biblical application, not biblical um Doctrine. Second Timothy 4 and 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. Second Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the word, be instant in a season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. There are many manifolds of grace, and the Spirit of God anoints us in different seasons. Some may be a word of re reproof, uh, a word of rebuke, a word of exhortation, praise God. Uh, and the word of God says even to be a bishop and to be a certain, you know, deacon, bishop, bishop and elder, you must be apt to teach. Praise God. And we have a lot of preaching of the word, but we don't have a lot of teaching of the word anymore. And the Bible says this uh, study to show thyself approved. And I just wanted to encourage you today that the word of God was written by inspiration for these things. It was written for, um, praise God, doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction. And it was written by the prophets and the apostles. Praise God. And I just wanted to answer a few questions. And uh, King James Version 1611 Edition Bible is the most accurate because it was written when the church had not fell into apostasy in uh, Philadelphia. Praise God. And um, let's go to Revelations and read that real fast. Closing in this. Praise God. I'm looking. Right here, and the angel of God of the church in Philadelphia write these things, and he saith, That is holy, he that is true, and he that is the key of David, he that open and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man open. I know thy works, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them a synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept my the kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, and to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast that which thou hast, and take no and that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write. Upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, 
which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him a new name, and he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And if you go back to the church age, uh, the church fell into apostasy, apostasy 70 AD, and this was written during when they were keeping the word. And I just wanted to share that with you. God bless you.